Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's continue with our course in heat transfer. We are making use of the textbook of Sengel and Kajar, and we've already completed uh, chapters, chapter 4, and in your previous module, MTV 310, you did chapters 1, 2, 3. Chapters fa chapter 5 is a numerical chapter, and as you know, this year, this semester, you're doing MKM 4, and uh, you're going to cover that in that module, so that will not be covered in this module. And that's the reason why we continue with chapter 6 on the fundamentals of forced convection. So it is a general chapter. Before, we will go to chapter 7, which has to do with external convection. In the next chapter, chapter uh, uh, Eight, which will be internal forced convection, and chapter nine, natural convection. So after this chapter, three more chapters on convection. So you'll be able to see it is quite important. But let's just revise very quickly in terms of heat transfer. There are three mechanisms of heat transfer. The first one is conduction, with Fourier's law. The second one is convection, and the last one is radiation. If we look at conduction, then normally we would talk of one or other body with the molecules very densely packed. And the medium is normally a solid although it can also be a liquid or a gas and typically when the gravity is equal to zero. So out of the Earth's, at Earth's atmosphere where there is no gravity then there the Heat transfer can also be by conduction, it cannot be by convection. <coughs> so, if we now look at the difference between conduction and convection. With convection, there's a presence of the bulk fluid motion. <coughs> While with conduction, there's an absence of bulk fluid motion. And that is the big difference between convection and conduction. If we want to show it schematically, we can do it like this. Let's suppose this is a heated plate. The surface temperature is 50. And we've got the air at a temperature of 20 degrees C. And we have a fan or a pump. For air, it would typically be a fan. If it's a water or a liquid, most probably it will be a pump and it will be convected or forced over this flat plate at the velocity of 5 meters per second. And then that would be the heat transfer rate Q1. And we will call this forced convection heat transfer. Where is the IT guy now? He was supposed to be here. Right, so that is forced convection. The next one is again 
The surface is heated to 50 degrees Celsius. And the air is at 20 degrees Celsius. But there is no fan. What will happen is that the molecules next to the plate will be heated and their density would decrease and for that reason the buoyancy forces will move it upwards and there will be a small natural motion of the air. And this we call natural convection. Typically, we, you can see it with smoke very easily. So, uh, would it be fair to say that conduction is a mechanism within the, convection, the flow of convection? So, the heat has to transfer from the plate to the gas particles that they throw over. So, yep. would it be fair to say that conduction is a mechanism within convection? Yes. It's actually going to be exactly on the boundary. If you give me a few minutes, then I'll get to that. So that has to do with the influence of conduction to convection on the boundary. And just have wait a minute or two, then we'll be there. So that is the, the next type of fluid motion. And the last one would again be, there's no fan or anything, but G is equal to zero. <coughs> so although the fluid the air will be heated there, <coughs> the buoyancy forces can't force it upward. And in this case, it would be conduction heat transfer. So that would be Q2, the heat transfer rate 2, and that would be the heat transfer rate 3. Now what we will see is that for the same heated plate of 50 degrees Celsius, the surface is 50, the ambient air is 20. In general, we will see that Q1, the transfer of 1, would be more of 2, and that would be more than 3. So the heat transfer rate of the forced convection will be the highest, followed by the natural convection, and the one which is going to be the smallest is the conduction case. So in general, we can say the higher the fluid motion, the higher the heat transfer coefficient, the higher the heat transfer will be. And that brings us then to the whole principle of the Nusselt number. And the Nusselt number is a, is, is a dimensionless number and it is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by a characteristic length divided by the thermal conductivity, where H is known as the heat transfer coefficient, and its units is watts per square meter. Take note, it can be degrees Celsius or it can be watts per square meter Kelvin. Why? Because a temperature difference in Celsius is the same as a temperature difference in Kelvin. Does it matter? LC is a characteristic length. It's a characteristic length. And K is the thermal conductivity
of the fluid. Take note, and we are going to get to the, the boundary condition between a solid and the convection heat transfer just now. And many students would typically, if it's a copper plate, use the K value of the copper and not the K value of the air. So this is the thermal conductivity of the fluid. Its units are watts per meter degree Celsius. And of course, the units for, for the characteristic length would be in meter. <coughs> Now let's suppose we have a case where the T infinity is 100 and uh, and the characteristic length is 8 meters and the thermal conductivity can be either 400 or it can be 0.03 so that would be typically be for a high for a fluid with a very high thermal conductivity in comparison with that of air so the same heat transfer coefficient for both problems let's just look at the initial numbers the initial numbers would be H multiplied by the characteristic length divided by K. The transfer coefficient is 100. The characteristic length is, is 8. And the thermal conductivity is 400. So the initial number is equal to 2. And then the same for the case with a thermal conductivity of 0.03 and then the initial number would be equal to 27,000. What does it actually mean? <clears throat> it means that a initial number of 2, and I'm going to get to it just now, would, in terms of this conduction case, as a reference, if the, nis the initial number for this is always equal to 1 for conduction, if the initial number is 2, it means it, it makes the heat transfer double. While in the other case of 27,000, the heat transfer by the forced convection would be 27,000 times larger than that of conduction. So that is what it means. Okay, so the physical significance of the initial number I think you can cut Kyle. Kyle. 